Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about the Scar Diabus written by James Hurst. Now before I go into the summary analysis of this short story, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. In this short story, we're introduced to a family that has a newborn child, and this newborn child is called Doodle. Um, Doodle is not supposed to live. The doctor tells this family that he's going to die and that his health is, is just not good at all. And Nicey, a woman who was there, a midwife who was there when Doodle was born, she believes that Doodle is going to survive and going to be um, somewhat of like a saint, basically. Uh, we don't get names for the mother and father within the short story, and we don't get a name for the older brother within the short story. The older brother is also our narrator, so we get the story from his perspective. In the story, um, we see that the father builds Doodle a coffin because he believes that he's going to die. Um, and the mother really doesn't have any hope that he's going to survive. But the narrator, he can't take this. He doesn't even want to deal with a brother who's disabled or who, who is crippled. So at the beginning of the story, he tried to smother Doodle and try to kill him. Uh, but the thing is, like, he doesn't do this because Doodle smiles at him when he was about to do this. And so he believed that there is a chance that Doodle could be a normal kid. So the narrator makes up his mind that he's going to train Doodle and make Doodle a proper individual, proper kid, a normal kid. So um, from the time where, from the time Doodle smiled to the time um, he begins becomes to act normal or begins to act normal, the narrator is there 24-7 pushing Doodle um, forcing Doodle to do things that he can't really do. We see Doodle um, change colors, and when he exerts himself too much, he becomes pink, blue, and when he can't breathe that well, he falls down here and there. And the older brother, he is this individual that is nice and also mean at the same time. We see him uh, cruel, being cruel to Doodle and also being very kind to Doodle. Uh, one thing that he's th that he did that is, that is very scary and very... Um, you know, mean towards Doodle is that he forces Doodle to touch his own coffin. Um, there's a lot of things that symbolize Doodle's death within this short story. Um, there's a lot, like, from the beginning of the story, we get different ideas and different concepts and different phrases of this darkness and this death that is coming. So the story goes on, and we see that Doodle learns how to walk. Doodle learns how, you know, he learns how to crawl. He learns how to rock. He learns how to swim. Uh, and the narrator just keeps pushing him and pushing him and pushing him. Dudo develops his own identity within the novel. He he becomes this character that loves to tell stories, that to, loves to tell um, to tell narratives to his family members, and his um, stories are very vivid. They're full of colors, and um, his stories are very interesting. So he's a normal kid because by this time he he can walk, he can talk, and he can communicate with people. He just can't exert himself physically. But the narrator can't take this because he wants a brother that he can box with. He wants a brother that he can swim with. He wants a brother that, you know, he can row boats with. So he doesn't want Doodle to just be a person who can walk and talk. He wants a Doodle to be a person who is physically um, capable of doing everything that he can do. So the story goes on. Um, and what we see that happens next is that there's this scarlet ibis that comes into the family yard. And it kind of like lands on the bleeding tree and it dies and it's this very beautiful bird with red feathers and just really nice colors and it dies and it dies in a very awkward way doodle and the rest of the family they run out to see the bird in the yard um and it it, it just the way that it dies the way that it neck twists um and and s's and the way that, that its legs um are you know laid out when it dies it's just it's very sad and very depressing and doodle just he he is attracted to this site and he's just looking at this bird and he believes that this bird needs to be buried the rest of the family goes back inside and he buries the bird and so doodle comes back to the family um you know everything is is well they're they're, all, they're eating at the table together mother father the narrator and doodle and life is normal doodle is normal and everybody's you know happy that both of the boys are alive but the narrator his pride is always getting in the way his pride of you know he doesn't want to have a disabled brother. He doesn't want to have a crippled brother. He doesn't want to have a brother that has problems. So he makes he makes you know regiments, and he he's just he, he's going to fix his brother. And Doodle is this project that he is um, constantly trying to fix. Is this problem that he's constantly trying to change? And so after they're done eating lunch, after they're done having food as a family, 
uh, we see the narrator and Dudo, they go out and they, um, you know, the training continues. And while they're out, the rain starts pouring and lightning and thunder and you know, the scene gets bad and they start to run home. And um, Dudu is not doing well. Dudu, you know, he's not becoming more physical. He's not becoming an athlete, basically. And the narrator is very disappointed and his pride is getting in the way. He And he, he just doesn't want to deal with this anymore. And so in an effort to try to get to try to get Dudo to run, he starts to run in this um, rain and um, he leaves Dudo behind and Dudo is screaming out and yelling out, please don't leave me, please don't leave me, don't leave me, brother. And the narrator doesn't listen. He shuts Dudo out and he loses Dudo and Dudo can't keep up and Dudo dies. When the narrator comes back to find Dudo, uh, he finds Dudo dead with blood in his mouth and blood covering his clothes and he starts to cry, but it's he's the cause of it. He's the one that pushed Dudo too far that um, made um, Dudo push himself to exertion to the point where he died and he couldn't take the, the physical demand that his brother was asking him to 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 do. So that's how the story ends. Um, Dudo dies. And in terms of analysis, in terms of the deeper meaning of the short story, uh, we do see a parallel between the Scarred Ibis and Doodle. Um, the Scarred Ibis is this, um, this tropical bird, and it, it's, it lands in the, the, the family's yard, which is very far, far away from its natural habitat. And Doodle is in the same way. Doodle is not normal. He's a human being, but he doesn't have the same capabilities as other human beings have. And so... Um, they both end up dying in quite the same way. The same way that the scarred ibis is described, the body of the scarred ibis is described on the ground is the same way that the doodle is described on the ground when his brother finds him. The way that their legs are described when they're dead and the way that their necks form and the way that their necks twist uh, when they're you know looked at on the ground is pretty much the same way. And they both die in this red color, in this red ooze, both the scarred ibis and... Um, Doodle, Doodle dies with blood covering him and the red ibis dies with red feathers covering him. So death was imminent. The coffin was always there. Um, you know, the way in which that the narrative forced Doodle to touch his own coffin, the way in which we, we talked where the, the, the narrative tells us about tombstones and um, funeral flowers and coffins and all these types of things, they kind of foreshadowed Doodle's death and how Doodle was being forced to um, work to exertion and that that's what caused him to die. So the the story really tells us a lot about pride. It's the narrator's pride that killed Doodle. It wasn't the fact that the doctor said he was going to die. If the narrator left Doodle alone, left him to grow up, left him and and let his muscles develop. Um, we see within the short story, we see Dudu walk, we see Dudu talk, we see Dudu do um, normal things. If the narrator allowed him to, he's not even a teenager yet. He's not even fully developed yet. So by the time he he could have been an adult, by the time he was an adult, Dudu could have probably um, you know have the ability to walk or have the ability to swim and do all these things. It's the fact that the narrator didn't want Dudu to face any judgment from school at all. That's the reason why he his I'd forced Doodle, he forced Doodle to do things that he wasn't ready to do, and that caused him to, that caused him to lose a brother. So, very interesting uh, story, tells us a lot, a lot about pride, and uh, that's my perspective on it. Maybe they should have listened to Aunt Nicey and that, you know, treat the boy nicely, and listen to the doctor, treat the boy gently, and, um, you know, maybe the, the outcome would have been different, even though that everybody believed that he was going to die, and... I guess he did die. So that's the summary and analysis of The Scarlet Ibis by James Hurst. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.